Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. It's sorry, I'm really tired this episode. Honestly, it's about midnight right now. Me recording this episode. You guys are probably not seeing this until midday tomorrow, but I hope you all enjoy this episode of CSK News. And first off, all those stories are actually time marked down below, but let's get right into the stories. For all you diehard fanatic fans out there who are still not convinced that roster changes will fall upon them, certainly you're most likely wrong. Unless Fanatic actually offers the players who are leaving a drastic increase in some kind of incentive, whether it be money or some kind of contract out there, it does seem as of right now, Olaf Meister and Dennis will be leaving Fanatic by the end of August before DreamHack Malmo does set in. It should be sooner than later though because of course big tournaments are coming like DreamHack Malmo. Now on top of that we've had new things happen in the past 12 hours that have kind of solidified this as evidence but first off I'll touch on the stuff that came out a couple weeks ago. Many of you know Fanatic is a very business oriented team organization. They always push products but a few weeks ago they were pushing Olaf Meister products like no other. Signed jerseys, signed mouse pads. Also in the description of these products they labeled as a eulogy. They couldn't make it more obvious. A eulogy is a speech for a funeral, a going away party, a death of a fanatic member known as Olaf Meister. On top of that though, Dennis is the more obvious pick for the weakest member on that team. Those are your two target members who should be leaving sometime soon. If not one of them, probably both of them. So on top of that, we've had more evidence in the past 12 hours. We actually had Lecro, currently a good uh, top tier prospect for this team as well, playing for them in the past alongside a lot of these players as well in the previous shuffle. Lecro actually joined the fanatic steam group. Even more importantly though, and more solid evidence, this is not kind of a quick coincidence guys or I guess it is kind of a coincidence the fact is this the Fnatic Academy team was currently participating in the ESCA Premier Playoffs and they have withdrawn their lineup from those playoffs out of nowhere. If you check their Twitter guys there is no explanation as to why but it seems maybe they cannot fill a full roster because one of their players might be joining the new Fnatic roster sometime soon. Most likely the key prospect right now is their IGL Golden who would obviously take over Flush's role as IGL. Flush should not really voluntarily be in a IGL. He kind of just took it because no one else would. He would take over that spot on Fnatic's roster and then Lecker would join for Dennis. So that would be the new Fnatic roster going forward if everything worked out just fine but all of you guys know these trades they change in an instant and anything can happen but it does seem almost guaranteed that Olaf Meister and Dennis will leave. Who will replace them? Will it be Lecro? Will it be Golden from Fnatic Academy? We'll have to find out in the coming weeks guys. And also we have rumors out there about ex I by Power members and ex Epsilon members all being match fixers of course them being unbanned by one organizer so far that is ESL. ESL has a very large tournament coming up not a major of course it's actually ESL New York so a pretty large LAN event coming up and qualifiers do start very shortly here as well and so that means all those match fixers could be putting together lineups to actually try and qualify Qualify. So all the rumors out there right now circulating around Dazed or Steel trying to start teams. And first off, I do want to thank the guy who actually sent me this screenshot. That is currently Steel's ESCA scrim team. Now I do not think he's actually going to try and field this team for a qualifier. If he does, kind of an underwhelming roster there, but many of those recognizable names. Floppy's a 17-year-old North American pro. We also have TCK. He's an E-United stand-in player, so definitely a lower tier player there in the North American scene. And then Frost, a very well-known guy back in Echo Fox days, he was their coach. So I don't think Steel would actually try and field this roster, but it goes to show you the kind of power he has in a short amount of time. He can scrim with just about anyone and put together a short notice team. Do I think he'll put together a team for ESL New York qualifiers? Just maybe. Will they actually make it? That's a whole new question. Now on top of that, even more rumors around Days putting together a team, a more powerful lineup, because he can obviously pull in people like AZK, who's coming back from the Overwatch scene, maybe even Swag. Other people want to join him as well for this ESL event, but it seems one of two things have been said by Days on stream so far. One of which is actually just straight up, he's not ready. He may may not be ready to actually play the hours or put in the hours and he may not be that the actual top tier he used to be in the North American scene. On top of that though, Dazed has also said on stream that he might not want to practice all that much for the team just if they're going to depart after an ESL New York qualifiers. Whether they qualify or not, he doesn't want to put in all that time for a team and all of a sudden have them disband after one single event. So it seems that Dazed might try and wait it out and may not even try and qualify for ESL New York. We'll have to wait on short notice to actually see if Steel or Dazed or anyone else out there fields a brand new team to try and qualify for that tournament. And speaking of tournaments out there, specifically more like majors, many of you probably watched the Dota 2 International. Uh, once a year it actually happens. This time it was actually first place, a $10 million plus prize just for first place. I believe a $25 million plus prize pool. And they do do a lot of crowdfunding there for their international events. And I'm sure a lot of you guys probably watched that this last weekend as Team Liquid came back from a lower bracket win. And what that means is they actually took over the TI system. When people say TI system, it means the international system. It's basically taken away from Dota 2 
as well as a lot of COD events actually hold this right now. CSGO, not one of the organizers or games out there that actually holds a lower bracket system. And what they mean by the TI system is pretty much when you lose, you have a chance to come back later on through a lower bracket system. And people are trying to wonder if, if CSGO would actually ever incorporate this into their majors. Now I want to say I do like group stages, I do like upsets when it's best of one series. I think smaller LAN events should have this, but every once in a while it'd be fun to see a major actually implement a TI system where if a team loses out of group stages, they're not completely done. They actually go through the lower bracket instead and have to fight their way back that way. So I really want to know what you guys think about this. Should CSGO incorporate a TI system into their actual majors? I think it'd be kind of a fun thing to see and it would definitely offer a whole new suspense. And again, if we actually had this as well, Fnatic, once they got knocked out of the quarterfinals, they would then go back through the loser's bracket. So it'd be cool to see what would actually happen if this, had, if this did happen and it would definitely add a whole new aspect to the game. I just don't know when we're going to learn to not listen to Stewie2K with just about anything he says on stream. Uh, yet again, we've had more rumors leaked, I guess leak. He took to Twitter and said this. What he was actually talking about is he said he would not be playing for Cloud9 anymore on stream. And, and yes, that actually, it was false. I mean, surprisingly, I know you guys are all surprised. Although it could be true in the future, we really won't know till the end of August. I highly doubt they're going to be leaving Cloud9. But yes, for all of you who are actually wondering, will, will they still be playing with Cloud9? I still highly think so. And again, like he said on his, on his tweet, guys, I doubt he actually would say that kind of thing without an actual, uh, without a knowledge of that. I don't think he would actually say that before it really happened. And for all you Spanish fans out there, Miami Flamingos have returned with a brand new CSGO roster. If you guys remember back to TWC 2016 as well as last season of ESCA, these guys did very well with their old roster. Now, that old roster has actually taken over a new team called Gale Force. In a kind of surprising fashion here, Miami Flamingos have signed a brand new Spanish roster on screen for all of you fans of them out there. Actually really cool because it only took them 10 days to sign them. So don't worry, both squads are doing quite well, especially the ones that participated in last season of uh, TWC 2016. They're doing well in Gale Force and a brand new Miami Flamingo lineup here as well. So Spanish CSGO is thriving right now and doing a great job. Who knows where, where Mixwell is in this mix right now. But also on top of that, some inside news. I had a, a confidential viewer actually contact me about TWC, the World Championships of 2017. If any of you guys remember for 2016, that prize pool money has yet to be paid out to several teams. And we were kind of worried if, if the World Championships would come again to 2017. As of right now, it should be happening. So for all of you TWC fans out there, that's an event where all the teams who actually participate have to be the same nationality. It should be happening later this year in 2017. It usually happens around, I think I want to say November or December. So watch out for that, guys. TWC 2017 should be happening. As always, hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of CSK News. This is probably the last or second to last video I'll actually be doing in my basement. I'm moving in my apartment right now today, and that's why I had to pre-record this video. So hope you guys all enjoyed. As always, live, love, laugh, laugh. My name is Jake. Remember, I like you. Please leave a comment down below so I can reply to you guys if I if I hopefully can. And also leave a community question if you guys have any questions for me. So, um, yeah, that was the outro. See you guys later. Uh, goodbye.